Hey everyone, now that we've taken a look at the Alibra user interface, what does it look like to actually model parts? Well, let's take a look at that in the video today. So let's take a look at this time lapse real quick and you'll see that as we run through the history tree real quick, this cylinder head is built feature by feature in the history tree. And that's exactly what we do when we go to create solids. So here we are in the part modeling environment with Alibre, right? So from the home screen, you click part and you come here. And the first thing that we do to make solids is to make sketches. And that's this button up here, activate 2D sketch. And if we click that, it asks us to select a sketch plane. And I've got three of them. I've got my YZ, my ZX, and my XY. I also can come up to this button if I wish to create a plane that is not one of these three but uh, almost always one of these three planes are going to be perfect for what you want to sketch on first. And then I have these uh, series of sketch tools. Now I would say that since almost every solid that you're going to make is going to go back to a sketch, building your skills in sketching is a worthy pursuit of your time. We can start with the basics. I have a line tool and I can left click and place a line, left click again and again and again. And every click I place a new line and I can double click if I wanna stop placing lines. I can box select and hit the delete key to get rid of what I've sketched. I can make a rectangle. I can make a circle. I can make an arc and I can put these together in meaningful ways to make the shapes that I wish to make. So I'll go with a uh, circle here. And what can I do with a circle? The first thing I can do is I can choose the extrude option. And the extrude option pulls the circle straight out of the sketch, right? We're saying in a direction normal to the sketch plane, we can move this circle. We also have a box that comes up, which looks like this, and we can specify specific depth, right? I can say 5.3 inches if that's the distance that I would like. I also can draft the angle of the, of the extrude, so I can say maybe I want a five degree draft, and this becomes more of a cone where it's five degrees uh, tapered. It'll become larger on one side and smaller on the other. And this is a great thing for something like injection molding if you need draft for an injection molded part. So extrude is one thing that we can do. But there's a few other things I can do as well. Now you'll notice in my tree over here, it says that I have made an extrusion and a sketch. And if any time I want to edit either of these, I can right click and select edit. And maybe I can change the dimension of my sketch and my solid will update. Likewise, I can edit my extrude, and maybe I can give this a distance of 5.4 if I wish to revise that. And everything that I've done can be edited once again. And that's why we call it Parametric CAD, because we are truly modeling around parameters here. I also can delete my past features. So I can go to my extrusion, right click, and choose delete. And my sketch stays around. You can see my sketches in red here. Next, I have the option to revolve. And you, you may recall that we pointed out that there are three uh, default axes in our modeling environment. And I can choose Revolve. And it asks me for an axis to revolve around. And when I choose that axis and I choose my sketch to revolve, I can make a donut. <laughs> so this circle, instead of being pulled straight out of the sketch plane, is instead revolved around the axis that I choose. And of course I can choose various degree angles. I can say 45 degrees or 137 degrees. I can go uh, mid plane on that, or I can choose an angle in both directions and say 100 degrees in one direction and five degrees in another direction and so on. And so that tool will be known as revolve. But what if I want not to revolve, but actually just have this profile go down a certain path that I wish to specify? I can do that simply by making another sketch. I can sketch out a path, maybe using what is known as a spline. So the spline option up here. 
allows me to make a path that has a non-constant radius, right? Very bendy uh, path that I can move around. So we can go with a sweep. That takes our profile down a specific path. But what if I want to change shapes, right? This will always be circular as it goes down the path. What if I want it to turn into a square or something else? Well, for that, we can go into what a loft is. I can sketch on a plane and create a circle. I can create a new plane and I can say I want to reference the XY plane and go a distance offset to that of about 10 inches. And I've created this new plane. I can activate a sketch, select my new plane, and I can sketch out a rectangle. And from here, I can say I want this circle to gradually turn into this rectangle. And I'll choose loft. And there I have a circle that changes into a rectangle. So if you want to make something very organic, uh, lofting is a great way to do it. For instance, a fighter jet made in the Libre will mostly use lofting for the body. Finally, I can always delete my loft. I can delete one of my sketches. I can edit this sketch. And I can say, create a new rectangle. I have this helix feature here, and I can choose an axis to revolve around, and we can create a helical spiral. I also can change this to be a flat spiral, just like that. So we have these tools at our disposal to create solids. And we have many more that we'll talk about in the coming videos. Hopefully that gives you a great idea of what the workflow in a Libre looks like using sketches to make solids. Tune in to the next video where we'll talk about the specifics of making precise sketches. I'll see you then.